Hello and welcome to the video. This is a little bit of a video and a shout out to manufacturers and vendors of fixed wing models, be that traditional planes, V-tails, wings, whatever. Now some models that I get in here that I play with just want to fly. They are fantastic. You don't need a flight controller in them. The detail that you get in the manual is spot on. You just set them up as per the manual and the first time you throw them, you might need a couple of clicks at trim and away you go. However, that isn't always the case, and there are video after video on this channel where I followed the advice provided in the manual, and I use that in the loosest possible sense, and still have problems getting it flying at the field. Now, there are some models that are just fantastic straight out of the box, and the manual that's provided with them gives you easily enough information to set it up and get out and fly. Things like the Bixler from Hobby King, things like the Flying Fish from Atom RC, the Dolphin, and also the Ranger T1, which is one of my favourites right now, are a piece of cake to set up and beautiful to fly. However, not all of them fall into that category. I've had issues with things like the Delta Strike here, the ZOHD Dart 250, I tried to fly it without a stabilizer, the Atom RC Mobula, I had the same problem, probably because of the same reason. And those are examples of ones that I've really struggled with. And usually that is also because there is key information missing out of the manual. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because if you are buying something that you're going to be spending $150, £150 pounds on, you don't want the first two or three throws to end in disaster, to smash bits of foam off, break bits of plastic, and to destroy that investment within five minutes of getting to the field. You want the best possible chance of having a good experience. Now, I will cheat if I go to the field with a model and one of my friends has already had it and dialed it all in and figured out where the CG needs to be, where the throws need to be, what any reflex needs to be set up as, and they've done that all. I will copy their setup, and that invariably results in a much more successful maiden flight. However, not all of us have the benefit of having someone else that has walked those steps before us. And you will notice now that in the reviews and maidens that I'm doing, I'm spending more time covering the key information, like central gravity position, throws, whether or not the reflex needs to be, and things like the elevator, what the trim positions need to be, in order for it all to work. But if you're somebody that's living in the middle of nowhere and maybe you are coming from the quadcopter part of the hobby or maybe you just fancy trying this whole radio control fixed wing thing out, if you don't have anyone around you, you're relying on that manual and videos like on this channel here to kind of get you over the hump and get you in the air without it all ending in disaster and you just ending up with £150 worth of bits of foam. Now, the vendors and designers of fixed wing models, particularly the foam ones, will spend a lot of time refining everything because the molds are horrendously expensive to get produced. So they have to have everything dialed in and they will go through quite an extensive process. That means lots of test flying. I know this because I've been involved with the creation of a couple of models, including things like the AR Wing Pro. And that is not an overnight process. The AR Wing Pro took over two years to go from an idea to a final product that you could buy. And that testing and flying all went into figuring out where the central gravity needed to be, what the throws needed to be, if there was any reflex needed, all the little twe tweaks and tips and tricks to get it set up so that it was pretty ready to go out of the box. But unfortunately, that testing that the manufacturers do doesn't always make it through into the manual so that you can get the benefit of those of the pilots that's already set it up, just like I've discussed. There are some common things that you need to know to be in a chance of having a maiden flight that doesn't end in disaster. They include CG placement, the throws that are needed, the offset or any trim positions, maybe you need some reflex, the battery size that is recommended, the maximum takeoff weight is also handy to know, so you don't try and put too big a battery in it. A heavy model will not fly particularly well. The lighter you can keep a model, the better it will fly. 
And the last thing is if you can fly the thing manually, i.e. without some kind of stabilizer or flight control system in it. Now I add iNav into an awful lot of my models here. I like the auto launch feature. It helps me get into the air and get it all trimmed with minimum of hassle. Plus it gives me an on-screen display and that return to home feature if something happens to the FPV feed. But if it doesn't say in the manual that that is required, then I've been trying to maiden models without it. And that's why you've seen me struggle with some of the maidens on the channel. If the vendor was clear about the fact that those things were mandatory in order to get the thing into the air, you know what, that's fine. I'd drop one in and probably have a great experience. But the issue is the vendors aren't being that explicit. Now I use a load of tricks to try and make my maidens more successful. I'll put a link down below to this particular video that talks about what those are, but it's things like having a slightly nose heavy model, ideally having someone else that can throw the thing for you, having a decent amount of expo on the controls, extended trim setup, the instant trim feature set up on the radio, having dual rates and in lots of cases actually sticking in some kind of stabilizer or flight controller just to make sure everything's going to work and be fine but it's an iterative process my friend and i both uh, found that with the ranger t1 model just pushing the center of gravity towards the nose by just about five millimeters transformed the way it flew particularly at slow speeds and how aggressive the stalls were but that iterative process can be made a lot shorter if you have a great starting point, and that is all details in the manual. Now I need to give a shout out to all of the vendors out there who are doing lots of really cool things about this. For example, Hobby King have started to include something called a quick start guide. This has the central gravity and also have the throws on here. There is a link to the full manual, but actually if you are an experienced builder, it gives you everything you need to know in order to get into the air. It's a shame that Hobby King don't seem to be making many models these days, but it is something that I would love to see from more manufacturers. Models that I've been struggling to get into the air almost exclusively on the channel are ones that are missing that key information. And that is why sometimes they're resulting in a crash. Now, two of the vendors that I will call out specifically that I need to do better on this are Atom RC and He Wing. They are two of my favorite vendors for fixed wing models right now. They're making some really innovative, fun, exciting models for fixed wing and wing flyers like myself. However, the manuals they're making really need to step it up and include all of the information that I've discussed in here to give somebody that maybe is starting out or that doesn't have the benefit of an expert or somebody local or another pilot that they can copy the setup from the best possible chance out the gate. So if you are watching this and you are a manufacturer of fixed wing models, whatever type it is, please, please, please make sure that us pilots get the best information of how to set up your model so that the first time we fly it it's a great positive experience that ends in a big smiley face rather than a bag of foam. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.